Hello everyone. Today in this lecture we will derive the inductance of a composite conductor line. Before going to do that, what we want to see what are composite conductors. Composite conductors are those conductors which are composed of two or more strands or elements which are connected electrically in parallel. So the word composite comes from this word composed that is the conductor which are made of two or more element or strands which are electrically in parallel. For example, let us see this conductor X. Let us say it is having N strands, strand A, B, C up to N. These strands will be connected in parallel. That is, let us say at one point here source will be connected to this conductor and all these strands of this conductor are being connected here. So, we can see that all the strands of the conductor are electrically in parallel. So, this conductor X will be a composite conductor. Similarly, I have shown here in another conductor Y which is having M number of strands A dash, B dash, C dash up to M dash. So, it is having M number of strands. The formula, the process which we are going to use here can also be utilized to derive the conductance of multi-circuit lines. What are multi-circuit lines? Those lines which are having multiple circuits in them. That is for example, let us say it is a double circuit line. It is having one circuit composed of these three phase A, B, C and the other circuit is composed of phases A dash, B dash, C dash. You can see here that uh, the phases, same phases are being put at diagonally opposite places. Why it is being done we will see later but to give a hint we uh, want to do uh, what we want to do here is that we want to increase the geometrical mean radius of the system so that the inductance is reduced. That's why we are trying that the same phase conductors are put the maximum possible distance away. Similarly, C and C dash are being put up, uh, diametrically, diametric, diametrically opposite to each other. In this way, we are trying to reduce the inductance of the double circuit line. Why we use double circuit line? Why multiple, multiple circuit lines? Uh, so that we can utilize same tower for uh, you know uh, more for uh, transmission of more power and to uh, to multiple loads uh, by using the same tower. Due to this, our right of way requirement that is the requirement for the uh, passing of the transmission line towers and all those is reduced, and the cost is also reduced because we do not have to make one more line for the other circuit, we can utilize the same tower by uh, some minor uh, mechanical adjustments. So in this way, uh, the multiple circuit lines are more beneficial. That's why uh, these are being built nowadays uh, in more numbers as compared to the single circuit lines. So before going to the derivation part, we will see what are the assumptions we are going to take. The assumption which we are going to take are that the strands of a conductor, let us say these n strands of conductor X are identical to each other. That is they are going to carry the same current. If the conductor X is carrying total current I, then each strand will carry current I by n. Similarly, if this conductor Y, let us say it is the return conductor, it is carrying current minus I, then every strand of this conductor Y will be carrying a current minus I by M. So in the next slide, we will utilize these assumptions and the formula which we derived in our last lecture uh, for derivation of the inductance of a composite conductor line. Now we will see the derivation part. Here. As usual, I have shown two conductors, conductor X and conductor Y. Conductor X is having N strands A, B, C up to N and conductor Y is having M strands A dash, B dash, C dash up to M dash. 
Now, as I already told in the previous slide, that uh, the strands of conductor X are carrying current I by N, and each strand of conductor Y is carrying current minus I by M. Also, in the previous lecture, previous video, we have seen that flux linkages of a strand or a conductor which is surrounded by multiple conductors can be easily written as flux linkage of let us say conductor 1, let us say uh, there are many conductors, conductor 1, conductor 2, conductor 3, and these are surrounding each other. Then flux linkage of conductor 1 can be given as 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 into current in conductor 1, natural log 1 by R1 dash and current in conductor 2, natural log 1 by distance between conductor 1 and conductor 2. Similarly, for third conductor, we will take the current for the third conductor and distance between first conductor and the third conductor up to n terms. Now, we will utilize this formula in writing the flux linkage of the strand A of conductor X. I have already shown the distance between the uh, same conductor's strands as DAB, DAC, DB and DAN and for the uh, distance between interconductors I am showing as DAA dash, DAC dash, DCC dash. Now using this formula, this formula I will write the flux linkages of conductor A as 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 is common. I already taken it common. Now every strand is having current I by N. So the first strand, the strand A can be written as I by N natural log 1 by R A dash. R1 dash is changed to be uh, changed to R A dash. Similarly, the second strand I by N natural log 1 by D A B. The distance be between the first strand and the second strand. Now continuing up to the nth strand, I can write I by N natural log 1 by D A N. So I have done uh, the flux linkage contribution of the strands of the conductor X. Now come to the strands of conductor Y. What are the flux linkages they will create? Now every strand is carrying current minus I by M. So I am writing the current same here and 2 into 10 to the power minus N is already taken common. So I will write the distance between strand A and strand A dash as DAA dash. Similarly for the strand B dash, it will be DAB dash. And similarly, I will write M terms that is up to the M dash strand. So first we are having N terms of the strands of conductor X and next we are having M terms of conductor Y. Now, as we know that in natural log, natural log A plus natural log B can be written as natural log A by B. So I am using this formula in converting these two terms as numerator and denominator. Now you can see it is minus so and this is in denominator so this will come to the numerator part. So it will be 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 i and the power the power 1 by n will go to this part and power 1 by m. 1 by m will become power and it will go here that is we know let us say n log a can be written as log a to the power n. So that's what I have done. I have taken i outside and 1 by n remaining here and 1 by m remaining here. So this will go to the power part. So this is going to, raise, to be raised to power 1 by m and denominator is going to be raised to power 1 by n. Also, you can see since it is having n terms, so denominator is also having n terms and the numerator part will going to have m terms, m terms here. Now, the inductance of any conductor, if I know its flux linkage can be written as flux linkage upon current in that conductor. So, the current in strand A is IA or it can be written as I by N. So when I will divide this
this result by i by n what i will get i will get cancelled only n will go to the numerator part so i will get 2 into 10 is to power minus 7 n natural log these are m terms 1 raised to power 1 by m and these n terms raised to power 1 by n now every strand will have a little bit of irregularity so to average out the average out that irregularity or dissimilarity i am taking the average for all these strands so that i get a uniform average value for each strand so the average value for strand a can be written as for any strand can be written as sum of uh, the inductance of uh, all these strands divided by the number of strands that is la plus lb plus lc up to ln and divided by n now as we have derived la similarly i can derive lb also and i can use this in the formula now since the conductor x is having all these strands electrically in parallel now we also know from circuit theory that inductances when connected in parallel uh, they combine similar to parallel resistors and since every strand is having a an inductance given by l average so the resultant inductance of n strands connected in parallel will be l average divided by n or this term divided by n this comes out to be la plus lb plus lc plus ln divided by n square now i will write expression for la lb lc and up to ln to get the final inductance of conductor x so the inductance of conductor x can be written as i am taking this 1 by n square outside 1 by n square outside for now i will write the expression for la la can be written as 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 n natural log daa dash daa dash dab dash dab dash up to m terms dam dash am dash raised to power 1 by m and the denominator part as daa dab up to n terms raised to power 1 by n 1 by n similarly for this uh, uh, strand b i can write dba dash dbb dash up to m terms dbm dash raised to power 1 by m and here dba dbb now to make my expression uh, look good i have changed ra dash rb dash rc dash so on to daa dbb dcc these are sometimes called as self uh, geometrical radius of the conductor so i have replaced ra dash by daa rb dash by dbb similarly rn dash by dnn in this way i can write the expression for lx now we will do some mathematical manipulation with the expression to get the final result now i will take this term it is present in every term 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 and outside and we also know that the uh, logarithm log in logarithms uh, addition changes to multiplication so these terms will get multiplied now you see these are m terms this is also m terms this this expression is also having m terms so these m terms raised to power 1 by m D these m terms raised to power 1 by m now we also know that the number of additions the terms in addition are n since we are going from conductor a to conductor n so there are n terms so in numerator there will be n terms and each term will be having m number of terms so total terms will be n m okay in numerator similarly in denominator we will be having n terms and these number of terms are already n so we, we will be having n terms and each term will be having n terms so total number of terms in numerator will be n square n into n n square 
Now we also know that a to the power x into b to the power x gives a into b raised to power x. So I will use this mathematical expression to further simplify my expression of inductance of conductor x in the next slide. Now continuing from the previous expression we see that I can write this as here. Now we can see that this n will cancel out one n so only one n will remain and these are m terms into n terms and every term was having power 1 by m so I have taken the power outside. Similarly we are having n terms into n terms and power was 1 by n for each term. So in numerator we are having m into n terms in denominator we are having n into n terms. Now I will take this n as a power inside the log so the power will change to 1 by mn and this will change to 1 by n square and I have written the expression here. Now these two parts are very special that's why they are given a meaning they, they are given a different name also. As we can see the terms in these the in the numerator are the mutual distances that is distance between strands of conductor x and strands of conductor y. So these are kind of mutual distances that's why we are calling this as dm that is mutual geometrical mean distance. Now in the denominator every term is kind of a distance between these strands of same conductor that is self geometric distance. That is why we are calling this term as ds or self geometrical mean distance. We uh, usually write it, it as gmd and this as gmr. So the inductance will be 2 into 10 is to power minus 7 natural log gmd upon gmr henry per meter. So the inductance came out to be this for the conductor x for the whole line that is for the whole circuit what will the total inductance it will be L circuit equal to Lx plus Ly because the inductance of conductor x will be in series with inductor, uh, inductance of conductor y. So the total inductance will get added to get the total inductance of the transmission line. It is Lx plus Ly for the whole phase it is Lx plus Ly. In this way we have seen that the inductance of a multiple stranded line or multiple conductor line also or multi phase line also we can easily derive the expression for inductance if I know the formula which we derived in previous lecture that is flux linkages of a conductor surrounded by multiple conductors. If I know that formula if I remember that formula by heart then inductance of any type of transmission line or any type of configuration can be derived and also these two terms are very important. These will be utilized in every formula which we will study in the next lectures. So it is very crucial we understand the meaning of GMD as well as GMR that is geometrical mean distance and geometrical mean radius also and we also should know how to calculate these values for every type of configuration. Now one more request if you like my videos please share also and subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon so that you can get the notification of a new video as and when it is uploaded. Also share the channel with the electrical engineers as well as computer engineers since the channel is having separate playlists for computer subjects as well as electrical engineering subjects also. Thank you.